Here's the Blackmagic ATM television studio. I already have it set up and plugged in. I have three mirrorless cameras here. My camcorder there and another camcorder down there that's not working, which I'll explain later. Here's the GH5, GH5S, GH4, and this is a UX180. These are all Panasonic. Down there is a Canon XF200. They're all plugged in via, via HDMI. That one is plugged in via HDSDI into the switcher, and then this switcher is plugged into my TV over there. And that's the, the multi-view that you see. You're probably hearing a fan noise from the ATM. I think it's kind of loud, but you can judge for yourself. I wanted to do a rough setup just to see how this works. There's the AC wall unit. If I had a computer, a Mac or a PC, I use that ethernet port to connect to the computer. For Macs, you're gonna need an adapter to Thunderbolt, but that's how you connect it to the computer. And the display that you see here on screen is identical to what you would see on your laptop with the app, with the uh, ATM Blackmagic app. These are four HDMI inputs. They're all being utilized. And down here, there's four HDSDI inputs, so a total of eight inputs, four HDSDI, four HDMI. And on the top here, you have another set of HDSDI outputs. Now these are gonna go, if you had a multi-cam with cameras that had talkback, where you have two HDSDI, one is an input, the other one's an output feed to the camera operators so you can talk to them, and I'll show you how to do that in the front or I'll show you the feature of it. I won't show you how to do it. And over on this side, you have outputs. This is a multi-view output, HDMI, only one. And then you have another multi-view out, which HDSDI. And then you have a program monitor out, which is only HDSDI and not HDMI. A program monitor out is basically just the final output feed of, of the mix, the live feed mix, which is on that side. I wish they had an HDMI output as well, but HDSDI is great. Here are two XLR inputs to put audio directly into the device. There's a USB, I believe that's 2.0, but that's only to update firmware. It's not to really uh, plug into your computer. That's a remote optional accessory that you can get with the Blackmagic ATM. In the front panel, you have all of your switches that control each of the inputs. Right now I have this on cut mode. Cut mode means whatever button you push, you're gonna cut to that camera. You see on the right there, my big TV? That's the program feed, meaning that's what you, you, the final uh, output is. I'm switching. And you can see it's pretty fast. So on the front panel, you have these switches that control the cameras. These buttons up here, control the audio that goes to each camera. So sometimes you're gonna have your audio feed come from one of the cameras, and here you can select which camera feed you're gonna hear, which camera audio feed you can hear. AFV stands for audio follows video. On this side, you have a microphone and a headphone. The headphone is to generally hear uh, all the, the audio, the main audio source that's in the mixer, but it's also to hear your camera operators. You, uh, you would plug in a headphone microphone and you would talk to your camera operators that are all spread out. This is in more of a professional multi-cam setting and that's what this allows you to do. Here's a little front panel that's pretty cool that you can see the main pr uh, program out. I'm switching and it even shows you the camera. That's nice. And then you have your menu system that is fairly easy to navigate and set up and go through all the settings. You have the ability to go through uh, live streaming. You can have Keen. You can have a, several other features that are in this box. But I don't use any of that. So let me get to the reason why I bought this. And it's not for the reason why many people <laughs> buy this device. I bought this device because I, I shoot multi-cam and I was tired of bringing one monitor per camera when I wanted to see all the angles for my client or for myself to see a bigger picture. So I wanted to bring one monitor, a big one, 
and then plug all my cameras, whether it's, what is this, five cameras here, or three cameras, into one mixer, and then put that TV up, or a, a monitor, 24 inch monitor, whatever, wherever I was, plug everything in, and show the client all of the angles at the same time, in the same monitor. And then I also would have the ability to live stream and to do live cutting if I wanted to. In the market right now, there are not a lot of production switchers that are under $1,000. The majority of them are well over $1,000. We're talking $2,500 used to be the cheapest ones. Since then, they've come down in price. But when you're talking about multi-cam on bigger productions, sports that broadcast those kind of things, their standard is HDSDI, not HDMI. HDMI is a consumer connection. Unfortunately, all of my consumer cameras have HDMI, so I was looking for a mixer that had HDMI inputs, and there were not a lot of options out there. I did a previous video, which I would link to up here somewhere, where I took a, a TV sw HDMI switcher that I bought like on Amazon. It was about $250, under $300, and it had four inputs, I would plug them all in, and I got a similar, I got a quad view, not that view, and I was able to switch and do the very basic settings. The problem was the latency, which is why I returned it. Then I got the Roland 1HD, uh, and I did a little review of that, which I'll, which I'll also link here somewhere, or I'll put, in, I'll put all this in the description below. And that was great. It was $1,000, and it did a quad mode, and he had only four channels though, and it was only HDMI. You could do some other things with it, but it was pretty basic. I really liked it, uh, and I was gonna purchase it. I rented it, I, I used it, I liked it. But then when the ATM, Blackmagic ATM TV Television Studio HD came out, I was really curious because this was as inexpensive as the Roland was, it's about $1,000 but it offered so much more, so many more features. So that's why I got it. And after testing it out for a day, I'm realizing that for my purposes, I might have to return this. I don't know if this is suited for what I have to do. This is a lot more than what I need at the moment. And for what I do need it for, it's not that great and I'll, let me explain that right now. This production switcher has latency from all of the cameras here, going into the switcher, looking at the monitor there. I know you could barely see that screen, but I'm trying to get into all the cameras. This is, this is the best way, the fastest way I can do it, and I know this, the camera's not straight, but here I'm gonna, this is real time, and on the screen is the latency. Are you ready? Here it goes. There, so when you're filming your dancing, <laughs> that's the delay you're gonna see in the camera. Now if you can imagine somebody speaking and their mouth is moving. Now that's one thing I don't like about this setup is that latency. For live production switching, latency like that, from what I understand, is not an issue because this is going out to a broadcast, this is going out to an audience that doesn't see it live per se, and the delay uh, is minimal and it doesn't really bother people. But it bothers me because I am using this setup as a monitor, not for production switching. The second thing I don't like is this view you see right here. This is the only view from what I understand I could get. So I have all eight angles on the bottom, the preview and the program. With the Roland, you had multiple viewing options, and one of them was quad view mode. The screen would be divided up into four, and each one of them would be a camera. I like that the best, but this I can't really get rid of, even though the, this setup is the professional setup. This is what it looks like on a professional production switcher. And the third thing that I'm not too thrilled with, with the ATM, is that the inputs on the cameras, they need to be the same outputs. Even though I'm recording UHD 30p on these cameras, the HDMI output is a different output. And not all cameras 
have that. I'm using Panasonic, and these are all 4K cameras. They happen to have, they're in the same ecosystem, so it's fine. But the minute you start mixing cameras, it doesn't work anymore. I go to the video format. The video format is 1080p 59.94. The outputs on all of these cameras are switchable between 1920, uh, 30p and 60p. The HF200 says it's a 30, uh, 60p 1080 output, but it's only outputting interlaced, not progressive. And because of that, I can't get that camera to read, but I can get these cameras to read. Now maybe this, I haven't delved that in, uh, deep into the menu yet, maybe there's workarounds. There are a lot of corners that I have to cut working with low budgets all the time. So if you're watching this and you think a lot of what I'm saying is stupid, that's because I'm working with a stupid budget. <laughs> that's the best I can say. So uh, I really like this ATM switcher for the money if you want to do all the things that I don't like about this, so you're gonna use it for live streaming, you're gonna use it for proper production switching, you have multiple cameras that are HDMI and HDSDI, you have the same cameras, you're in a studio environment, you have production people who know how to use this equipment. This is a great device, but for the purposes of my usage, this is overkill, this is not what I'm looking for, and unfortunately, I might have to go back to just getting one monitor per camera angle.